Welcome to the install guide for the Flow RC CPU and RAM all-in-one cooler. I'm Jono and our builder today is Nick. We're using an AM4 motherboard today, but if you're using Intel, it's much the same and we'll be sure to let you know where it differs. But regardless of your chipset, you will be using the following items. The specific chipset block bracket, mounting hardware, non-conductive thermal pads, reversible backplate, RAM thermal pad, the included 2mm hex key plus 4 to 8 screws depending on how many RAM sticks you're using, the fan splitter, and finally, thermal paste. As Nick shows here, the backplate included with the Flow RC is reversible, with one side for AMD and the other side for Intel. Nick begins by applying the non-conductive pad to the side that says AMD on it. If you're running with Intel, simply flip it over to the other side and stick it on that side instead. Ensure you place the pad carefully in the center of the backplate. The thermal pad is to ensure there is no metal on metal contact with the motherboard and the backplate. So this is a pretty important step. Now it's time to grab the four long backplate screws. Mount these screws in the specific mounting pattern and location, which is determined by the chipset you're using. You can find this out by checking with the Flow RC manual. The screws have a flat side and a round side to their head, which ensures they stay in place and it means you can't really install them wrong. Also, ensure to place a washer on the inside of the backplate as this helps to lock the screw tightly and balances out the offset of the backplate. Now go ahead and install the other screws. Now place the backplate on the backside of the motherboard and be sure to have your standoffs at the ready. If you're not sure what they are, this is what they look like. Thread these onto the other side of the screws, ensuring they're on nice and snug. To know they're on properly, there should be no play once these slide onto the screws. You can now grab the Flow RC itself. It's time to get ready for mounting. To prep the CPU water block, first you need to get the chipset specific block bracket. Nick uses this one as it's for AMD, so remember to check you are using the right bracket for your chipset. Slide the bracket onto the CPU water block. This may take some effort and can be a bit finicky, so don't stress if it takes a bit of finagling. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the PC build, thermal paste. Apply it to the water block in your style of choice. And remember, a little goes a long way. Before placing the block onto the CPU, ensure you remove the protective sticker on the copper base plate. Align the water block and the attached bracket with the mounted screws we installed earlier to the base plate and press down firmly. Once your block is on, grab the silver locking screws and screw them in with your fingers first, inserting them in a cross pattern to secure the block. Then grab a screwdriver and tighten all the screws again to finish the job. Now it's time for your memory. Just remember the Tough RAM RC is the only memory currently compatible with the Flow RC due to the specifically designed mounting brackets. Install the Tough RAM RC memory into the designated slots on your motherboard. If you're not sure how to do that, we've got a motherboard how-to guide that you can see here. Nick installs four sticks of RAM here, but you can install the Flow RC with less if you desire. After you've popped your RAM into their slots, it's time to grab the RAM water block thermal pad. Peel the clear protectant off one side and stick it in the middle of the RAM heat sinks. Then peel the other side off. To finally install the RAM water block, you will need the 2mm hex key and the screws. Maneuver the RAM water block atop your RAM and line it up with the mounting holes. Then screw in all of the hex screws and ensure they are nice and secure. After this, all that's left to do is screw your fans onto your radiator and then screw that into your case somewhere. If you want to know how to install an all-in-one, you can check out this video here. 
Now you are on to the final step, which is to hook up your RGB lighting and get some power to the Flow RC. You remember that three fan splitter Nick showed off earlier? Connect the female end to any three or four pin fan headers on your motherboard. Then connect your fan's power cable to the male end. To get the RGB lighting working, you're going to need to first daisy chain all the RGB headers to each other. If you have the 240mm version, you'll only need to plug one of these together. But if you have the 360mm version, there will be two to connect. Now grab the RGB controller. This allows you to select lighting modes, colors, and the speed of the effects of the RGB on your Flow RC and fans. Connect this up to your fans. Lastly, to add some power, go ahead and connect the SATA connector here to the SATA power cable from your power supply. Now you're all good to go. You have officially installed the Flow RC CPU and RAM all in one cooler. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope this how to guide has been useful for you. To find out more about the Flow RC, check out our first look video on it right here. Remember to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We will see you in the next one.